All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome on this beautiful June day as we wind down our school year. Um, this is Mary Gregory, the director of the DSABC. Um, can everyone give me, just uh, type in if you can hear me before we begin. Um, okay, so it seems like we're good. Uh, okay, so we'll start again. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is Mary Gregory, director of the DSABC. Thanks for taking some time out of your afternoon. Um, as I just wanted to present some information about what to expect um, as your students are transitioning to the secondary level. So for those of you with students um, transitioning from elementary to middle school, that's probably the biggest transition that our mentors and our students make. Um, and we're also going to touch upon what to expect um, as you transition with your mentee to the high school. So I'm going to approach this um, from a logistical point of view as well as some um, developmental um, stages that your students may be going through during these periods. But a little housekeeping first. Um, just to reduce the background noise, we don't have our participants um, ask a question verbally, but we do want to hear your questions um, and your feedback. So if you would like to ask a question, just type the question in the question panel that you will see in front of you. Also, our mentors of existing middle schoolers, if there's any parallel wisdom that you would like to share with our mentors with incoming um, elementary students incoming to middle school. So if you want to share any of your experiences, I would encourage you to do that as well. So we shall begin. First, we're going to first start with the middle schools. because like I said, that seems to be the biggest transition for our mentors and the students. So just a quick overview, there are three middle schools that DSABC provides mentors uh, services to. Those are Broadview Middle School, located at 72 Hospital Avenue, right next to Danbury Hospital. Um, I have some just information on their enrollment. I think it's important for our mentors moving up to get an idea of the scope um, and size of the schools that they're um, moving into, uh, particularly transitioning from an elementary. Some of the elementary schools are um, very sweet and small schools. Um, where you know you have established relationships. So I think it's important just in the context of this discussion in mentoring in the middle schools to understand that they are larger environments with much more um, much larger student population. So Broadview is our largest middle school in Danbury um, with an enrollment of just over a thousand. Um, next year, 2016, they will be welcoming a new principal, Edie Thomas. She is currently the principal at Pembroke Elementary School. So for those of you who mentor there are familiar with Edie um, and their principal, Mr. Ed Robbs, is retiring after many, many years of service. So um, the next middle school is Rogers Park Middle School, located at 21 Memorial Drive, which is um, in the Memorial uh, War Memorial a park there um, on the south end of Main Street in Danbury. They have an enrollment of approximately 960 students and their principal is Patricia Joachim. The third middle school, it's a relatively new middle school to our district. Um, I believe this is the second uh, year of operation. Next year they will be fully operational, meaning that um, Westside Middle School differs from Broadview and Rogers Park in that it is not a neighborhood middle school. It is um, the home to two magnet programs. So students that are enrolled at the Westside Middle School um, are enrolled because their parents put them in a lottery and um, it's a school of choice um, versus the other two schools are neighborhood schools. So our Westside Middle School Academy houses the STEM and Global Study Program. Um, they uh, next year will have an enrollment of 600, um, oops, of 600 students, um, and their principal is Dr. Frank Labanca. So you can see that the uh, sizes vary of our middle schools. You will be notified by us um, at the beginning of next school year which school your student um, will be enrolled in. 
So we can take our good guess, but um, the enrollment uh, designations vary um, right up to the last minute of school, um, right, right, right to the beginning of the school year. So it takes us about a week or two to uh, verify the location of all of our students and where they are located, particularly that magnet school. Um, sometimes there's some fluidity there in terms of enrollment. So you will be notified just so you have an idea of what to expect at the end of August, uh, beginning of September for sure. And our school liaison. So um, this is just an overview of how the mentor programs are overseen in those middle schools. So at Broadview Middle School, it is overseen by the guidance department. Tani Duganta is the primary liaison, so that is who you will initially um, communicate with. Um, and that's where all the logistical information, such as scheduling, um, he typically does a welcome breakfast or an orientation um, to the new school year, so keep your eyes out for that. Um, but also your uh, student's guidance counselor um, is there to also offer you support for issues that are specific or questions that are specific to your particular student that Tani may not be able to address. Um, at Rogers Park, it does go through the social work department. It actually goes through one social worker, Lisa Basher. And at the Westside Middle School Academies, it goes through their school counselor, Dana Perez. So I'm going to talk about quickly just the role of the school liaison. It's not all that different from the role of the school liaison at the elementary level, but there are a few change, there are a few um, variations to that. So the middle school liaison is the person you will interface with when it comes to uh, working out the scheduling for your meetings with your student. Just as in elementary school, the time that you are um, able to meet with your student will be at their free period. That is typically over the lunch. They do not have recess in middle school, so your um, time is limited to the lunch period. They also have, the middle schools um, also have what they used to call an X period or an enrichment period um, that mentors sometimes have available to them to schedule for their mentoring. Um, and that varies. I don't want to commit to what that's going to look like next year because that uh, period seems to fluctuate every school year. So that's information your liaison will provide to you at the beginning of next year. Keep in mind that middle school lunch periods are pretty wonky. So for example, um, eighth grade lunch period right now at Rogers Park Middle School is at 1020 in the morning. So um, just something to keep in mind in terms of what to expect um, next year and how things might be a little bit different than what you're accustomed to right now. Um, those liaisons will support you in your mentoring relationship. They certainly will help assist you with the logistics of the building. They are bigger buildings, obviously, at the elementary level. Um, most of the mentoring um, takes place in the media centers or in the cafeterias, uh, but they certainly can help you with where you can and cannot mentor. You also will have other supports in a middle school. Um, the secretaries um, are also quite helpful. The, each school has a resource officer, so they can also be of assistance to you when it comes to some of the logistics in terms of space. Um, your school liaison will also provide you some guidance with any concerns that you have about your mentee, and they'll be happy to rematch you if necessary. So, for example, say your student moves or no longer wants to have a mentor, but you like mentoring in the middle school, they will be more than happy to rematch you. Um, this is a critical age, really, for the students to have mentors, um, even though as they develop through this age, they may seem a little reluctant um, or hesitant. It really is a great opportunity for mentors to really make an impact um, at this critical juncture for a, young, a youngster's life. So um, as you'll see, not that different in terms of the role that they play in the mentoring program. Just a couple of things to note, however, um, that will be a change. Um, is first, I just want to make a note that you have to remember that your mentee is a stranger to the staff at that school on that first day. So some feedback I receive 
on occasion from mentors as they transition into middle school particularly, but middle school and high school sometimes, is a little bit of a frustration um, that you may not be getting enough guidance as to how best support the student as you make that transition. But I want you to reframe that, or at least keep this in the back of your mind as you enter into this next phase with your student. Those students are a stranger to that staff, to those teachers, to the social workers, to the guidance counselors. They're all new. So it's not just new to this new environment to the student, but the student is new to the staff. You, however, have an established relationship with um, that child. It may be over a course of many years. It may be over a year or two. But regardless, you are a constant and will be a tremendous support for that student as they make this transition. I've often had, um, I've on occasion have had um, liaisons tell me how a mentor has been so helpful to them in supporting the student because they are able to give some insight um, into the full developmental um, stages or behaviors um, or issues that that child may have faced in their younger years or in their elementary years. So um, you can really be an asset to the student as well as the staff. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, communication. Your communication at this middle school level likely will be via email most of the time, if not all of the time. Um, as I kind of highlighted, the enrollment numbers for the schools, you can clearly see that they are dealing with a much larger student population. Um, and they will um, just logistically not be available to drop everything they're doing on a particular moment or day to, um, to address your concerns that you may have immediately. With that said, they very much love having our mentors. Um, we can never have enough mentors in the middle school years. So it's a little daunting, I think, to take on a middle school student right out of the gate um, as opposed to transitioning up. So um, they are there to support you. Uh, and my recommendation would be to make sure that you um, do engage with them, um, shoot them off an email uh, if you have any questions. If you do want to meet face to face, just um, you know, do so by making an appointment rather than just trying to track them down um, cold. Um, and they will provide that support for you. A big change for mentors going into the middle school from elementary school is that you will have limited to no access to your mentees' teachers. So on the elementary level, um, you know, in addition to your school liaison, you may have had the opportunity to engage in a relationship with the, um, you know, with the teachers. That is not likely going to be the case in middle school. So that's just um, an expectation that you just need to keep in mind that you need to manage. Really, your relationship is going on to the next level. So, um, you know, your role, as your role always has been, but now that the, the students are, you know, becoming more independent, um, really is focusing in on that one-on-one. -on -one. And space, of course, is an issue <laughs> in mentoring no matter where you're at, whether it's elementary, middle school, or the high school. Um, but like I had noted before, uh, there's plenty of assistance uh, to, to show you where you can and cannot mentor in the middle schools. So before I go on to some of the developmental stages, are there any questions at this point? Okay, all right, so I see we have some questions. So, um, okay, question is, how long is the lunch or enrichment period? So the lunch periods are about half an hour, I would say, half hour. You may get 40 minutes, but you're definitely not going to get more than that. So it is um, a shorter period of time to mentor, but one thing to keep in mind with mentoring is it's really the consistency. So it's really showing up every week that has the impact more than um, 
the duration of time of those meetings. Okay. So thank you for that question. So those were some of the logistics of what to expect um, in the middle school. Um, a couple of things before I do move on. One, I did mention that Broadview Middle School um, typically has an orientation breakfast. So they have a designated morning where they invite the mentors to come in. Um, they'll give you the schedule, your student schedule. They'll have you identify that schedule. You'll get to interact with the other mentors. Um, so it's not just for incoming sixth graders, but it is for all the mentors at that school. At Rogers Park Middle School, um, Lisa tends to just meet with you individually, so she'll send out individual emails that indicate the day and times that your, the student is available, and you'll arrange that schedule um, in that method. Um, and the same goes with the Westside Middle School. So just to kind of give you that um, idea of how you're going to be communicated uh, with initially from the school. Okay, so next we're going to touch upon the stage of the mentoring relationship. Last year, I did a full webinar on the various stages of a mentoring relationship. So if you're interested in getting a refresher on that or in viewing that, I have that whole um, webinar is archived and is located on our website. But I'm just going to touch upon where you likely are in the stage of your mentoring relationship at this point in time. So as mentors of middle schoolers, Clearly, you've started with this student in elementary school, so you may have started with them in, in the intermediate ages, fourth, fifth grade, or possibly even younger, as many of our mentors have. So you likely are in this building stage. So you're way past the getting to know you stage. You already know each other. You already have your routines established. So now you're really building upon that relationship. And as they make this transition to middle school, you may also take a few steps back um, in the stage of your relationship, just because this is a big transition for the students. Some of them may be excited. Some of them may be scared. Some of the students may want to exert their independence. And some can be overwhelmed by the expectations of them in middle school. So the biggest thing is, um, to remember is not to take any of their behaviors personally um, at any stage in middle school, but particularly as they enter sixth grade. Um, just as we're seeking our mentors to have a new level of independence over the relationship um, at this phase, um, so do the students. They are expected to um, to, to take things on their own in many ways. They no longer have a teacher or the social worker walking them down to the main office to see their mentors, for example. They have, um, there is an expectation that they um, need to manage their own schedules. So that does take time. So the building stage of a mentoring relationship. So what it feels like to a mentor. Um, you're learning more about each other. Your mentee may be opening up more to you, um, particularly as they're facing some of the challenges of adolescence. They may be more comfortable in sharing information that builds trust, so the conversations may be less superficial and a little bit more um, in-depth. You'll have established routines, so of course your routine will not be established um, right away when you transition to middle school. But what I mean by that established routine is you will have established routines in terms of how you interact with one another. And your student, you may be ready to help, you know, your mentee to set some goals. So what are some of the common pitfalls that happen in mentoring relationships at this stage? You may find that your mentee may start to be become extremely dependent on you, and that can be overwhelming to mentors. Um, you may find that um, happening when, um, particularly at this vulnerable stage, you know, where they're trying to make that transition and um, there's more demands on them from school academically, um, but as well as behaviorally. 
the, you know, what the expectation is for them to kind of take on um, responsibilities. So they may become a little bit more dependent on you. Mentors typically at this stage, um, if they're going to feel overwhelmed, it's at this stage of the mentoring relationship. As your student opens up to you and shares more, um, it's not atypical for mentors to feel very overwhelmed by the problems or the circumstances that your student may be facing. And you may feel underappreciated. So the flip side of where the student may become dependent, they may also take you for granted. And this may happen, I like to say seventh grade, <laughs> um, because that really seems to be the age where, you know, they're, they're no longer little kids. They don't quite have the maturity of, you know, an eighth, that an eighth grader, you know, who's thinking about high school and beyond has. Um, and so they may take you for granted a little bit. So mentors can sometimes feel underappreciated at this stage. So these are things you don't need to do anything with them. Just sort of be mindful if you're kind of feeling some of these things and feel that, um, um, you know, you're not quite sure how to handle the change in the relationship, just know that it is normal, number one. And number two, um, those middle school liaisons are well equipped, equipped trust me, to help um, mentors through um, some of what might be going through during your state, this particular stage. The next stage is testing, and I'm going to get into that when we talk a little bit more about high school, so just hang tight there. And finally, with this middle school stage, I just want to talk about um, what the kids are going through de developmentally. So as you transition to middle school, you're leaving, you know, a nice, sweet little child um, at the elementary level that we're always happy to see you as a mentor and, you know, give you big hugs and always, you know, excited and looking forward to your meetings and you know, Summer happens and you, puberty may have hit and you may have a completely different child that you're dealing with once you're in middle school, um, kind of going through some of those hormonal changes and just natural developmental changes. I often tell mentors, think back when you were in middle school. I know for most people, that's probably the toughest stage, right, of your um, entire childhood. So I'm just going to talk about briefly what the kids are going through developmentally, just so you can remember that some of these behaviors are completely normal and appropriate, although sometimes a little confusing, um, admittedly so. Um, but the biggest thing is never take any of it personally. Any social worker will tell you that. Um, if you're a parent of a tween, you know that. Um, and in terms of more information on this, we do have a webinar that we presented earlier this year with Jen Luby, who's the social worker over at King Street Primary, where she delves into some of these developmental stages a little bit more deeply. I'm just going to touch upon them. So um, this is where middle schoolers are at. They're working out what type of teenager they're going to be. Um, so they're making that transition from child to teen to young adult. They are starting to develop independence. That's one thing a mentor can really help a lot with, particularly as the kids are in sixth grade. There is going to be more expected out of them in terms of independence, getting their schoolwork done on their own, showing up to their specials or to meeting with you or if they're in any extracurriculars. That's all responsibility that um, will be new for, for many of them. So I think that that's of all ways that mentors can help um, at this stage um, or as this transition is really, you know, talking to them about what that feels like and helping to share, maybe some develop some skills and share some experiences about um, that developing independence. The kids will have a strong will of their own. So they'll definitely have their own opinions and probably not be too shy about sharing them with you. They may start pushing limits and boundaries. So with this expected independence, um, 
also, you know, some bravado appears and they will start pushing their limits and boundaries. So with that independence comes some freedom, maybe a little bit more freedom than they've been accustomed to. Um, so that's a typical um, behavior at this stage. They can be disruptive. Um, they're still emotionally bonded uh, with their families. However, they can start, they will start distancing themselves from adults. So they're emotionally bonded with their families, but if you remember what it was like being in middle school, you, you know, loved your mom and dad, but you didn't want anybody to know they exist and they drop, you know, you had them drop you two blocks away from the school. So it's sort of that same dynamic and um, that can happen with a mentor and a mentee, that the mentor is conflicted. They love their mentor, they want, they still want to have the mentor, but they also want to show their own independence. Um, they will also want to be with their friends. At this stage, um, it is all about the social. So um, I Give a heads up to mentors of middle schoolers. It's at some phase in the next three years, particularly the second half of sixth grade or possibly seventh grade, that you know your mentee may say they don't want to see you anymore or they may not show up to your sessions. Don't take that as at face value, number one. And number two, do not take that personally. I've been doing this for 10 years now, and I will tell you, for the most part, they do want their mentors, and they do want that consistency that you offer them and that support. So don't throw in the towel. Please, 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 if any of these, if that behavior starts, or you're starting to hear that in your conversations, or they're not showing up to meetings, please don't stop showing up, or please don't stop mentoring. Come reach out to me, to your school liaison, to the social worker. My experience has been that nine times out of ten, that student is conflicted. They want to be with you. They want to be with their friends. Um, and a successful tactic that we have used um, has been that we will recommend an alternate mentoring schedule. So I wouldn't do this in the beginning of sixth grade, but just something to keep in the back of your mind um, as you go through these years. So in other words, I've had mentors who have um, arranged like an every other week schedule to meet with the students once a month, but still continuing or maintaining that consistency, whatever that looks like. And what we have found by really listening to the student and meeting them where they're at is that those relationships come back stronger and end up being the most successful relationships in the long term. So it's because the student has recognized my mentor listened to me, they cared, they still showed up, they still were consistent. Um, and then we find typically by eighth grade that they're you're meeting back once a week and the relationship really evolves and it is that much stronger. So just something to keep in mind should you face that. I've also had situations where the students, particularly in sixth grade, particularly in the beginning of sixth grade, wouldn't show up. I've had mentors who've taken that personally, get very upset. Um, we've had a couple of instances when that's happened where the uh, social worker has called the students down and they start crying. Um, they say, you know, the response has been, you know, I want my mentor, I just keep forgetting. So, um, again, these kids are going to be expected to be a lot more responsible. And those middle school schedules too, by the way, are difficult to keep track of. They have A days, B days, one, two, three days, and that changes if there's a disruption in the schedule. So please be patient um, and recognize that most of what's happening has absolutely nothing to do with you. <laughs> it's just where they're at developmentally. And our, my social workers that work with me um, in the mentoring program all agree that of all the ages and stages, this is the most important 
phase for these students to have positive role models. So really embrace this transition and really look at it as an opportunity to really help um, be a positive role model and really help to um, help form a child as they grow up and go through this stage. So that's all I have for the middle schools. Are there any questions about what I just presented there? Okay, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to high school. Oh, well, before I move on to high school, are there any mentors of middle schoolers now who are transitioning up to high school that would like to share any of their experience um, or anything that they've learned mentoring through the middle school years that they would like to share with the other participants? Okay, I'll move on. High school. Give a little overview of our high schools. They're all very different. So <laughs> depending on where your student uh, ends up for their high school years will um, probably impact your mentoring experience. So we provide mentoring to three high schools here in Danbury. Danbury High School located at 43 Clapperd Ridge Road, which is Route 39. There's an enrollment of approximately 2,876 students, will be close to 3,000 or just shy um, up or down um, in the next school year. We are the, Danbury High School is the largest high school in the state of Connecticut. Um, the principal for next year will be Mr. Dan Donovan. He will also be new principal to the school. He's not new to the school. He's been an assistant principal for many years. Um, and the principal of the Freshman Academy. So he um, will make a terrific uh, principal uh, for the next school year. The current principal, Mr. Gary Boccaccio, um, is retiring after many, many years um, there. So that will be a change um, at that school. Just something to note from a logistical point of view that there will be construction going on. They are adding on um, an addition to the school, which is uh, should be completed in two years. Um, but that's just a logistical piece. I'm not quite sure how that will impact visitors to the school or anything. All that's yet to be determined. The other high school where our mentors serve is the Alternative Center for Excellence, also known as ACE. ACE is located in on 26 Locust Avenue, um, across from the um, science building at the at Westcon. So it's over by the hospital area. Um, the enrollment numbers there, it's approximately 90. The numbers there fluctuate, but it's always somewhere between 85 and 90 students. And the principal there is Sandy Atanasoff. It is unlikely that your incoming ninth grader will start the school year at the Alternative Center. Um, if they are going to uh, choose to attend the Alternative Center, it will likely happen sometime in the middle of ninth grade or any time thereafter, more typically 10th or 11th grade. Um, it's a very small environment, um, very, um, a lot of student support there, very communal. Um, and, and a fair amount of flexibility for mentors, um, quite frankly, there um, at, the, at the Alternative Center. It's a great place um, to mentor. And the other is Henry Abbott Technical School, located at 21 Haystown Avenue. We have approximately 700 students, and the principal there is Stacy Butkus. Abbott Tech is not a Danbury public school. It is a state vocational school. However, many of our mentors, such as yourself, um, are will follow their students year over year. So if their student does enroll at Henry Abbott Tech, our mentors will follow them there as well. Um, just that's that overview there. And the school liaisons, just as the middle schools, the high schools run very differently how they oversee their mentoring program. So things just to keep in mind in terms of expectations. Danbury High School, as I've laid the picture, is a very large place with somewhat li with, uh, quite frankly, limited resources. So um, mentors coming in there need to be prepared that you um, will need to have a, a high level of independence. Um, your relationships are coming in strong. We provide, we try to provide a lot of support for our mentors of freshmen. 
um, mostly because if you can get through freshman year, your relationship is very well established, and then the rest of your time mentoring at Danbury High School um, typically goes quite smoothly. Um, so how the school liaison role is shared at Danbury High School is we split the responsibilities amongst the College and Career Center coordinator and the guidance counselors. So Kim Tricola is the College and Career Center uh, coordinator. She, her office is in the Career Center, which is located in the cafeteria, or just off the cafeteria. Um, and she um, deals with kind of the day-to-day -day logistics. Um, you can call her to see if your student is in attendance. She does have student workers, so she is able to get messages to your students. Um, Many times, that is where we recommend that the mentors and the mentees meet. You don't have to stay there to meet, but that is a meeting spot because Kim can try and help locate your student should they not show up. And your student's guidance counselors are um, available to provide you with support for issues specific to your mentees. So Kim can kind of help you with the bigger picture and the day-to-day -day and the logistics. Um, the guidance counselor can help you with any questions or support. Um, obviously, of course, within our confidentiality rules, um, as outlined in FERPA, that doesn't change, um, but they, the guidance counselors will help you with some of those specific issues with your, that you have with your student. Um, and Kim would be able to connect you with the guidance counselor as well as myself. I can help um, with that as well. Uh, and one thing to note with every high school also for our freshmen, we typically do a an orientation breakfast that um, Ellen and myself organize, um, and that is where you'll be reconnected with your mentee after the school year. Um, you will also um, be given their schedule, so you can work out with your student based on their schedule when you can mentor. Again, it's when they have free time, so the times are going to be weird. They're not going to be what you may be used to in terms of a typical lunch time. Um, so it really just is incumbent upon when they have a free period. Um, the school liaison at ACE is the school counselor, Diana DiNardo, and at Henry Abbott Technical School, it's their school psychologist, Susan Krabari. And the one thing just to keep in mind with Abbott Tech, since it is vocational, um, once they declare their um, their trade or their specialty, um, as you move through that school, there is period. there are periods of time when they're out. Um, doing their uh, trainings. And so they're either in shop or they're actually out in the community um, getting their training hours in their specified field. So that does impact um, your mentoring schedule. Um, not adversely, but it does, um, you know, that is just something to keep in mind should your student be going to uh, Abitech. And just like I indicated with the middle schoolers, in terms of where their schools are assigned, the same goes for the high school. Um, it takes us a good week or two to pin down where these students end up. Um, so you you may have an idea. Your mentee may have told you, yes, I'm going to have a tech in the fall, or no, I'm going to Danbury High School in the fall, and things changed. Trust me, things change a lot over the summer. Um, so you may have an idea, but don't put that as in stone. Um, we will get in touch with you um, about the where we were your student is enrolled. Um, so the role of the high school liaison. So as your student is growing up, they're growing into young adults, and your relationship at this point has probably developed over the course of many, many years. At this point, the mentoring really is about your relationship, and that is going to change in the terms of how you may support the student, perhaps helping them thinking about post-secondary, whether it's career choices or if they're considering college or some kind of training in a, uh, in a trade. So it's really going to evolve um, over these next four years. So your role of the high school liaison is um, will help you with the scheduling, that would be Kim at Danbury High School and the other liaisons with the other at the other schools. They can help you support with the mentoring relationship. They will help you with to the extent that they can with the logistics of the building. I will um, let you know at Danbury High School space is at a premium. 
And it may even be more so in light of the um, construction that's going to be happening. So I just put that out there so you have that in the back of your mind that that is an expectation that the space to mentor um, may be a challenge. Mentors at the high school, tip, Danbury High School, typically meet either in the career center or the media center. You, there is a courtyard that mentors um, can also use um, to meet as well. But there are some times when there's testing or other things going on, college visits, for example. You know, when UConn comes to visit at the Career Center, that Career Center is packed and there is no um, space for the mentors. Um, I assure you that, again, do not take this personally in any way. Um, I've had mentors who have been frustrated, you know, feeling as if um, they're not valued. Um, and that is 100% not the case. The school cannot get enough mentors. Um, it is really and truly just a matter of logistics and the size of the school and a growing student population. So we just ask for your patience and understand that when you transition there. Things to know, again, very similar to middle school, your communications will likely be via email. Again, manage that expectation that, you know, individuals are not going to be able to drop counseling students um, for whatever your concerns may be, but they absolutely do want to help you to to give the best support that we can give to the students. So um, email is probably your best route. Um, again, we have a large number of students, um, and you will have no access to your students' teachers. As you, as you can imagine, with particularly at Danbury High School, um, if you're teaching a subject area, you have, you know, you're teaching five classes of 30 students. So, you know, that's just, um, you'll have no access to the students at the high school level and space. I address the space issue. Um, at the smaller high school, that's less of an issue, but um, it is something to note at Danbury High School. Any questions about that? Okay. So where are you at this stage of the mentoring relationship? You're typically at this um, the testing phase. So they're definitely taking you for granted by now, probably. <laughs> um, and they may definitely be testing um, you. They may be unsure where they're at in life. Um, so here's just some things to think about if you're at this stage of the relationship. And, and you very well, I just want to note as well, that you may experience some of this testing stage of your mentoring relationship at the end of middle school as well. Um, but what, it feel, what does it feel like? It can feel confusing and it can be frustrating for mentors. Um, common pitfalls that can happen during this stage is that you just may feel less interested in continuing the relationship. Like, this is too hard. Um, I'm finding them, my interactions to be, with them to be frustrating. I'm not enjoying this. Um, and that you can take the um, behavior personally. So I have an example of this. I recently um, had a mentor whose student was definitely, definitely testing her. It was clear. Um, the mentor would show up, the student wouldn't show up, or if the student did show up for the session, you know, would tell the mentor, I don't really want to see you today, come back tomorrow. Um, you know, we have, the mentor is trying to explain, you know, I can't just leave work tomorrow, I'm here now. Um, and the student, was, the student was really confused and didn't want to end the relationship, but didn't want to be accountable for time. And the mentor used terms to me that were, this is no longer a rewarding experience for me. So knowing that that student really did need to continue to have that support of this particular mentor who'd been with her for a long time, and knowing that that student was having lots of um, issues um, at home and at school, we did work it out that they just take a break. So they did that. They took a break um, probably for a quarter, or for a full quarter, for half a semester. Um, and the mentor did have an opportunity to meet with the guidance counselor. And um, what transpired after that was really nothing short of a miracle, quite frankly, but it was really wonderful because um, the student was just in a different 
headspace and it was just at a different you know had just a different outlook on the mentor um, the mentor didn't let her down you know she she said I will come back on this date and then we will reassess where we're at if we want to continue or not um, and what had happened is so the rest of the quarter this last second half of the school year um, they meet every week the student put it on her in her planner um, they came up with an action plan um, you know if you can't meet for whatever reason this is how it should be communicated so the mentor really was such an effective role model in that um, she listened to the student but she also was um, showing appropriate boundaries for herself and so that really was a learning lesson. She wasn't allowing the kid to kind of take advantage of her in a way. Um, and they, um, yet they, you know, they both, it, it kind of taught the student some mutual accountability. So hang in there if you <laughs> find that there is some frustration and know that there's always support. So don't feel that you're out there on your own. Um, I, you know, I certainly am a resource. Ellen here is a resource. We can help plug you in to um, supports at the school. They are a little bit difficult to tap into organically at the school because many of them are big places um, or it's just not so clear cut. But um, please, I don't ever want any mentors kind of out there floundering or, or frust to the point of frustration. Most of these things are just normal um, for where you're maybe at in your relationship and where the child is developmentally. So that's going to segue into where they are developmentally. So where the adolescents are in high school, it's such a huge change, right? Going from particularly ninth grade to 12th grade. I mean, it's really quite something how those four little years, um, they really blossom into uh, adults. And um, so there's a lot of turmoil that goes on in that <clears throat> short period of time. <coughs> Excuse me. So one, you have to keep in mind that this is a, they're at a huge transitional stage in their life, probably the biggest transitional stage that they're going to experience. They're starting ninth grade as kids, really, and really and exiting as adults. Therefore, they're experiencing a lot of turmoil. Um, a lot of turmoil with internally, you know, well, what am I going to do after high school? Do I want to go to college? Do I want to work? What do I want to do with the rest of my life? As well as amongst their peers. There's a lot of peer pressure. Um, there's just a lot of academic pressure um, coming from them. So there's just a lot happening during this stage. They can be hard to engage with. Um, at this age. As in middle school, their friends really are everything. So to the extent that as a mentor, your role is to be their friend, I think is key more than kind of going in there authoritatively or judgmentally um, to the extent that you hopefully have always been a friend for them. but. Um, really be mindful that if you approach the relationship as a friend, um, they may be willing to engage a little bit more deeply than if you're kind of in a parental role. They may be rebellious, obviously. <laughs> um, and you have to keep in mind that, like I had alluded to earlier, there is lots of pressure coming at them. So even if you as the mentor are not putting pressure on them, trust me when I tell you that they are feeling pressure. They're feeling pressure from their peers. They're feeling pressure from their teachers. There are a lot of demands um, put on um, high school students these days. Um, they may have issues of independence and figuring out who they are. And they are pushing themselves away from adults, including their family. So if we want to contrast that to middle school, middle schoolers are starting to push themselves away from adults, but they're still very bonded with their family. When the kids get to the high school age, yeah, they still love their family. Of course, family is important, but they um, are starting to push away um, and really kind of expanding their their circle. And they may be moody 
and they may act as if they're adults because they are on this weird cusp. <laughs> so they may have ideas of adulthood. Um, they may think that, you know, oh, if, you know, if I quit school now and I could take care of myself, yeah, no problem. But they really obviously aren't really adults. So um, just understand that and try not to be judgmental around that, but maybe to be supportive and, and kind of talk them through some of those feelings that they may be feeling that are absolutely appropriate for this age. So just mentors, um, you need to have a ton of patience when you're working with um, the adolescents, when you're dealing with the high school students. And just as with the middle schoolers, do not take their behavior personally because it absolutely is not. Um, if any of you, or if I think most of you, have attended our um, annual scholarship event breakfast, um, I don't think there's a better example of reiterating that message than that event. Um, that is often the first time that the mentors hear any feedback from their mentees about what that relationship, the impact that relationship has had on them. Um, and many times, as you know, attending that breakfast, some of these mentors and mentees have been together for 10 years, 12 years, so their entire uh, education process. So um, again, you have an opportunity to really make a big impact on the life of, um, of a young adult at this stage. You know, and, you, and with the patients and with really trying to understand where they're at, putting yourself in their shoes, you really, you are, they are able to make that connection with you. So like I said, really, my, my little piece of wisdom is really to approach it as a friend um, more than anything else. So that's just a high-level overview of logistics as well as some changes you may be seeing in your student as you transition to both middle school and high school. I'm happy to take any questions now, if there are any. And if not, just things to expect going back to the school year. So um, we go back, I'm trying to think, what is the date? When did we, when did we go back to school? Well, we go back to school in the end of August this year, so a little bit later than we did this previous school year. Um, so you should hear from either myself or Ellen, probably um, give me a week to ten, 10 days or so into the new school year um, to I'll send out a communication letting you know where your student is enrolled, and that information will also include your school liaison. Um, as in elementary school, we usually don't have the mentors start up um, at the middle school or high school until about um, you know, a good two or three weeks into the school year. One, schedules um, need to be hashed out, particularly at the high school level. The high school students have up to two weeks to change their schedules. So we don't even bother giving you the student schedules right when school starts because it will not likely that won't actually be what it actually is at the end of the day. Um, so that's just to give you a time frame. And then um, with the high school orientation, we usually do that within a month of the school year. So everybody will be up and started no later than the end of September for sure. So until then, I wish you all a very happy and wonderful and relaxing summer. Feel free to either give me a call or shoot me off an email if you have any questions or concerns over the summer regarding your transition or any time during the school year next year. Um, you know, we are here to be a support. Uh, we know these mentoring relationships mean the world to you as well as to the students. So um, please don't hesitate to ever reach out for any assistance that you may need. So thank you and have a wonderful summer. <laughs>